my name is Marvin and this time welcome to another episode of Buy Food in Japan where we're going to introduce you a few of the spots that are less um, traveled to by tourists in the hopes that you would come here in your next trip to Japan. If you haven't been to Kwagwe, this place is known as the capital of sweet potatoes where every food would contain sweet potato like so. If you're hungry and you want to come visit the place, come and watch this guy. <laughs> The smell of autumn and welcome to Higawa Jinja. Um, this shrine was built in the 6th century and is a special Jinja dedicated to the gods that are responsible for love and wealth. Um, one interesting fact about this shrine is that it also has special rituals and amikajis. And during summer, if you happen to find yourself in Japan, um, during summer it is also home of the famous wind chime festival. One of the great things about coming to Japan are the multitude of shrines that are here. Um, if you don't know much about the shrine manners, I best uh, advise you to learn them before you approach one. I haven't really seen this in any of the shrines like all across Japan, but what I've noticed about the Hikawa Shrine is that they've got this little hoop, um, hoop game, which you could um, throw these rings and put them in specific parts that you wish. Um, if you know your Japanese, um, one of them actually symbolizes love, one of them also symbolizes uh, work and, and, um, and university in life, but the one I'm aiming for is wealth, which is this one over here, which is the, the first kanji sign with meaning money or uh, money or wealth. So let's see if I can actually get a few, right? Let's see, I'm just... That's one. That's two. That's three. I might be a bit unlucky for this one. Almost. God. I previously mentioned that Hikawa Shrine is great because of its wind chime festival, but it's extra great when you visit this place at night. And this is the reason why because the views of Hikawa Shrine, especially with this ultimate hallway full of tablets, is a sight to behold, especially if you're in Kawagwe area. There's no words that I could use to explain this feeling right now. But just to note that these tablets have inscripted on them just messages of love and hope um, inspires me to think the same as well. Hmm. It's indeed very, very peaceful. This particular Mikuji, you can actually go fishing, fishing. Um, this is the first time I've actually seen something like this. I've been to many shrines in Japan, participated as a shrine priest, but never heard or seen of anything of this particular uh, aperture. So, yeah, I mean, fishing for your Mikuji sounds quite fun, but looks quite difficult than anticipated. Oh, I think I've got, I think I've got, I think I've got. Oh, bang. <laughs> and just like a normal sign of Mikuji, you are required to read it. And if it's a bad one, please tie it up. If it's a good one, take it home with you. Anyway, that ends the nighttime version. Let's skip back to the daytime right now. Welcome to Kurazukuri no Machi, which is known as the warehouse street of Kuwagwe. Um, this entire street is filled with buildings called the Kura. And the Kura means in Japanese, fire resistant. Kuwagwe was known as the warehouse street where merchants would store all of the goods. And it contains buildings that are remnants of the Edo period. And it's something that you can't find in modern day Tokyo at all. And if you're in Kawagawa, you know that you're in the center of Kawagawa by the presence of this massive tower known as the Toki no Kane, which means in English, the time telling tower. It was built by a gentleman, a master carpenter by the name of Sekine Matsuguro in the year 1637, with the original service being from 1632. Now, one interesting fact about this uh, Toki no Kane is you can probably hear on the microphone is that it's also a very very active time bell where it chimes in every three hours per day so the first time being from nine o'clock twelve o'clock three o'clock and last being six o'clock each day so check it out when you're here 
At the moment, we're in this little place called Kashi Yoko Chop, which is a famous alleyway full of Showa era candies. Um, which I walked past this place and already this shop owner or the store owner like, introduced me to pretty much her entire family from Sydney, from, 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 from where I'm from originally. Kashi Yoko Chou isn't just famous for its many treats, but it also has a lot of shops. And one of the shops in particular have the largest breadsticks containing um, imo or the sweet potato. Uh, one interesting fact that remains about this place is that in 1923, after the events of the Great Earthquake, orders for candies for this particular area surged. At that period, there's only around 70 shops that existed, but now there are only 20. But even though there are 20, um, the popularity of orders for this particular place for candy has not dwindled since. And thus remains as one of those popular places for you to shop for candies in this region. For those who are major Nihonshu or sake lovers, did you know that the prefecture of Saitama is Japan's fourth largest producer of sake? And this place is called the Koweda Kurai. It was built in 1931 and is the host of 34 major distilleries of sake. Over here is also where you can find some vending machines. Um, which contain um, the major brands of sake. Um, however, there is a machine in Ryogoku Station and one that I understand from Shibuya um, where they have um, vending machines where you can purchase a single cup for 500 yen, distill it into the machine itself and then get a sample of the sake that is available in, um, in this particular region. So if you happen to find yourself in Kawagoe, this is definitely one of the places to go to because it's close to the station and is an easy accessible walk from the main region of where the warehouses are. And of course, this video can't be complete without the notion of food. And here we are at Okonoya, which they serve purple udon. And the purple itself doesn't come from food dye, it's actually from the natural sweet potato coloring. And that pretty much ends the episode of Kwagwe brought to you by Five Food Japan. If you are going to come to Japan very, very soon and interested in partaking in any food experiences and tours, whilst donating a part of your proceeds to the global community, look no further than Japan by Food, in which major vendors around Japan put their food tours and experiences, and which part of your proceeds will be donated to children in impoverished nations through their Food for Happiness network. Also, Japan by Food um, has a new restaurant reservation system in place in which you can find the best local eats and best local restaurants in the area prior to your arrival. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time at the next episode of Japan by Food presented to you by myself or Shizuka. Bye-bye.